All right, welcome to In The Zone. We have a special Knockdown J episode just because of the trade deadline. Wow. You had to, right? Cleveland Cavaliers, <laughs> we had to bring in my man J Mac. He's got some strong opinions. As always, I'm going to knock him down, Try but to. let's see what you got, my man. I mean, I, I, where do you want to start, Chris? I mean, with the Cavs, Isaiah Thomas, Lakers, LeBron. I actually think we should start with the Cleveland Cavaliers, if you don't mind. Okay. It is your podcast. Uh, they, they, I believe, lost six players, gained four new ones today, and I think they might have, as of right now, I two think open jettisoned, spots. Jettisoned, jettisoned okay. six players. Discarded, what would that. you like to use? <laughs> but, Chris, I, let's just start bluntly. I do believe they got a lot better today as a basketball team. You know all season you've been ribbing me. I've been saying, I think the Eastern Conference is a toss-up. Celtics, Cavs, I know you've been knocking me for that. It had been close in recent weeks. I put the Cavs decidedly number one now with the addition of Rodney Hood, George Hill. I like him as a point guard. He's definitely an upgrade. Uh, and, and Jordan Clarkson, who I've watched a lot, lot out here in L.A. I love his energy off the bench. He is a get buckets player. You know, LeBron can get rest, and you've now got Hood, Clarkson, Hill. I like a lot what they did. They got younger do you feel they helped or hurt the team today? Let me congratulate you. I oh. see all these weeks of being on oh, In the Zone. Yes, night night. You've been listening and I you've have. been learning. I'm learning. The first time we agree. Look, the Cavs definitely got better. Good enough to beat Golden State? No. Let's give them some time to develop chemistry, see if they can get there and make it a series. But definitely they should win the Eastern Conference. Number one, you still have LeBron James, who is far and away, far and away, the best player in the East. Now, it might be debatable if he's still the best player in the world, but the okay. East is not even close. Giannis, Giannis, mentally, he's not where LeBron's at, right. doesn't really know how to win yet. So, physically, he's great, but he's not on LeBron's level yet. Yes. Okay, he's got a ways to go. So, that's number one. To your point, they got younger, more energy. Yep. They're going to be better defensively because of those things. Then they cleared up some log jams. Yes. You had Isaiah Thomas, Dwayne Wade, and Derrick Rose, essentially three of the same type of players at this point in their career. Now, even when they first traded for Clarkson, I liked it, but I said they got to do something with D. Rose and Dwayne Wade because it, it was going to still be a log jam. They got rid of those two veterans. Now the second unit will be run by Jordan Clarkson. As you said, you watch him with the Lakers, he's got some flaws. But he oh, can score. Certainly. He's a slasher. He can give you 15 points a game off the bench. He's, he's, he's not Lou, a bad passer. Is he not passer. a Bargain Lou Williams kind Somewhat. of? Somewhat. A, a yeah. lesser Lou Williams? Yeah, he's I mean, he's in that vein. Yeah, he's that vein of plays nice off the bench. No right. question. Larry Nance, same thing, brings you energy. That first, when they got Nance and Clarkson, looked like, okay, they gave up Channing Fry. They gave up some shooting. But they, they Hill, I think they're starting backcourt now is George Hill and Rodney Hood. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. J.R. Smith has been along for the ride. You're not starting him? How long? How well has he two played? two brand new guys I would. In the now, you're right. They might do wow. it differently. I would start Rodney Hood. J.R. Smith has been so up and down he has. forever. Yes. But especially this year. Look, here's the importance of that two-guard spot for Cleveland. J.R. Smith has had 10 games this season in which he scored in double figures. They're eight and two in those games. Okay. Just give me something from that. I mean, how many times does JR give them six points and they lose? Yeah. Give me something from that spot. Now, Hood is a guy. They might bring him off the bench. You might be right. But I would start him. He's going to give me 17. He's capable of giving me 15 to 20 points a night. Okay. George Hill. And here's the thing for the Cavs. Because this, look, they got 29 games left, I believe, okay. to work in all these guys. And remember, Kevin Love is out. So that's not a lot of time. The thing is this, it's easier to work together role players or work in role players than it is stars. You're not bringing in a guy who's used to being the number one guy on his team, used to having the ball all the time, dribbling, over, over dribbling. You're bringing in a George Are Hill. Are those subtle shots at Isaiah Thomas? No, because Dwayne <laughs> Wade was like that, who I love. Uh, Derrick Rose is like that. Like It's just certain types of yeah. players. And George Hill is going to defend. He's going to shoot the three well. Rodney Hood can score, shoot the three pretty well, although he's somewhat inconsistent mm -hmm. with his shooting. They won't get in the way of a LeBron James. They're used to being in systems where they are not the man. Of course, Clarkson and Larry Nance, I assume Nance comes off the bench too. 
So I, I think they'll, they'll let, be in let good Let me shape. go next layer on the Cavs. Starting is one thing, but what it is, matters more is who finishes games. Who's on the court the final five minutes? And I just jotted down the roster here, and I'm looking, and I think it's a tough decision. Like, Ty Lue's going to have to coach. Like, this is difficult, okay? Like you said, you have George Hill. You have Rodney Hood. Jordan Clarkson, he's a closer. Uh, he's a good player. I like him. Obviously, you have LeBron. Listen, Kevin Love's got to be in that group, but defensively, do you need Larry Nance? Do you need Tristan Thompson? So is 29 games enough for these guys to head into the playoffs where first round you could be facing a good Sixers team, second round a good Bucks team, or the Raptors, Celtics? I, I do have some concerns if 29 games is enough for the Cavs to figure this out on the fly which leads to bigger picture LeBron questions, obviously. Yeah, I mean, look, they're not going to have the same finishing group every night. Sometimes there's some guys it's going to be depend on who's hot. I mean, you saw last night against Minnesota, Jetty Osmond is finishing. Yeah. He's not going to finish By every way, that game. that had to eat at Isaiah Thomas, did it not? Well, oh, look. The I, offense, I, defense, substitute. That's I real. Thought, yeah. I thought Ty Lue, I thought before they made these trades, I was thinking it was a good sign that he did that because it was a sign that he's saying, I'm going to play who's the better lineup. Not necessarily the best player individually, but what pieces fit together best. So the, the, the defense, the end of the game lineup will fluctuate. LeBron will always be in there. I, I would go with, like, offhand, I would think their best five might be George Hill, Rodney Hood, LeBron James, Tristan Thompson, and Kevin Love, Kevin Love. starting. Hmm. But you can end games with Hill, Hood, LeBron, Jeff Green, Jeff Green, Tristan. Kyle then you can maybe we haven't switch. Even Could be Kyle Corver. Is he I mean, still on the team? I, I just no. To check. He's going to be okay, on the let's team check the research. because they're going to need his <laughs> shooting. Yeah, and so I think this is now a more versatile team. Jeff Green, I like the way he plays for them at times. So Osmond, I mean, you can do a lot more with this lineup than you could with what they had before. So look, Kobe Altman, the GM, you got to give him a good amount of credit because he, he really made uh, lemonade out of some lemons. He there. did, and one of the players he got rid of, Isaiah Thomas, who by all accounts, I mean, you probably know better than anybody, was a disaster in that locker room. Yeah. We're now hearing reports that Isaiah and Jay Crowder were kind of set off from the team. They didn't really blend that, well. That's a part and, of why Crowder was in that deal because the, the team had clicks. You had LeBron and Wade and, yep. and Tristan and a few others. Then you had Isaiah and Crowder. Then you had other groups. Like, so, yeah, I mean, that, there's no, it's no su surprise that Crowder went along so with I, Isaiah. So I do want to ask about Isaiah Thomas. Uh, he's off to the Lakers now where, uh, you know, I, I don't know if he's going to crack the starting lineup with Lonzo Ball, KCP. They got Josh Hart, the rookie, who's in the long-term plans, playing very well. And again, you know, the biggest loser has to be Isaiah Thomas. I mean, geez, he 15 games with LeBron. That's it. And he's out of town. You know, when you ask what the future holds for Isaiah Thomas, Chris, I mean, he's got 25, 30 games to let it work out in L.A. If not, what? I mean, this is a guy well, who look. a year ago, third team all NBA. Yeah. He was fifth in the MVP voting. He's now looking at just two guys. Maybe if the Lakers kick him to the curb, who's going to who wants kick this guy? He is is not, he damaged good? He is not in the Lakers long term plans. I don't care what they say. You can't – Lonzo Ball is the future point guard Without of that question. team. There's no doubt. And Isaiah and Lonzo, I don't see it working. When Lonzo gets back, I think they're going to have to bring Isaiah off the bench. He's not going to be happy I about that. He's obviously trying to get paid. I'm with you. I feel for him because a year ago, not only did he give us 29 points a game, great fourth quarter scoring, mm -hmm. led him to the top seed in the East, 53 points a game or, or in a yeah, playoff yeah, right, right. game, when his late on his late sister's birthday, oh, played injured. I mean, the guy had a storybook season, but was making six million dollars a year. Oh. This year, six million dollars a year. He's never had his payday. Okay, I mean, he's only made like when twenty-two I look at, million, twenty-nine million. Is, and that, he's I know never that sounds had a his. Lot. He's no. twenty-nine years old. Man, this so was this his, was his chance he blew for a big it. deal. Let's be honest. He blew I don't it. think he blew it. He got hurt. Well, listen, when you he get got hurt. hurt. No, 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 Chris, hold on. You go to a new team where LeBron's the leader. You roll up to LeBron, the second best player in NBA history. Yes, LeBron, how can I, what, what would you like me to do, LeBron? You want me to come off the bench? What well, would you like me to do? You've got to fall in line. But you, and it's clear, Chris, he was not about that life. But you have to, I'll give you some of that, but you, you got to be yourself. 
What's gotten a 5'9 guy to this level where you could be fifth in MVP voting is a chip on your shoulder, uh, is, is an arrogance that people think you're crazy. Nate Robinson, same way. Hey, that Allen Iverson, and same Phoenix. way. Like smaller guys sometimes have to have that chip to get to that level. A lot of places Isaiah was, you heard similar things. That's who he is. You're right. The comments were crazy. You just got here. You're criticizing. Okay. okay. So fine. Let me let me ask you while you're on this role defending game. Isaiah. He goes to the Lakers. They say we want you to come off the bench. He says, uh, uh-uh, uh, not happening. Well, he ain't, he's not in position to say that. And then, who's gonna want this guy after that, what he just went through? The, Incl- nobody's paying this guy. Nobody's giving him a long-term contract. There is no shot. Well, in anybody. I think the damage goods, is, locker room disaster. Five foot nine, don't play D twenty. Well, his, his reputation has been settled. It's not like people are like, wow, Isaiah had problems in the locker room. I mean, you hear that all over the league. His rep is not great. The question is this. He wanted the max money. He wasn't getting max. I don't know that he'll get $20 million a year. I actually you don't think, know. I actually think he could end up, I hope this isn't the case for him, I could see him settling for a multi-year mid-level deal. Three years, fifteen mil. Three years. Well, the mil. Mo- the mid level is eight over eight, eight million okay, so a year. Three for twenty four. I mean, Lou Williams took he three twenty four. He should have got more. But that think about this guy wanted the. They had to back up the Brinks truck, right? <laughs> now the thing is, who's going to want him? What he what Isaiah needs to do is this. Hopefully he's listening and and taking heed. Well, he came out when to he you goes, on IG. So when I he goes to the listen. Lakers, he needs to be a good soldier. Whatever, zip it up, I don't want play to your role. If that role is what Jordan Clarkson was doing, coming off the bench, giving him 15 points a game, show a good team that I could come off the bench, give you a spark, and be that guy. There I could you be your Lou Williams off the bench. I could be your Jamal Crawford off the bench. Yep. Otherwise, no good teams are going to want him. It's just going to be a bad team that, hey, he's 5'9", he's exciting, let's get him to put fannies in the seats. And then they're not going to pay you a ton of money. So Here's a best-case scenario. So uh, KCP was with the Pistons. His deal ended. Nobody's giving him a long-term contract. The Lakers needed a stopgap for one year. I think KCP got $18 million for one year. If a team needs a guy, doesn't want to commit long-term, just wants one year, maybe he gets $15 million for one maybe, year. I mean, that's possible. Yeah, but point guard is a position where... I mean, dude, Dennis Schroeder, who's really good, is like not even a top 15 point guard. Like, there are so many good point guards in the NBA. I don't know where he goes. I feel a little bad for him, but that's good luck, Isaiah. All right, moving on. Chris, uh, listen, this is one that, you know, we haven't disagreed a lot here. The Los Angeles Lakers. They have got rid of Jordan Clarkson. He's off the books. They got a number one pick from the Cavs, which is only protected if it's like top three, which is crazy. So they got the it's tw- not gonna be about the 25th pick, yeah, pick in yeah, the draft. Yeah. We'll see what happens. They now can afford two, two max deals this offseason. Your thoughts on whether what transpired today, plus the whole recalibration story that we heard this week, which is obviously poppycock, right? As yeah. We know that's false. Uh uh, do you think this makes more or less likely the Lakers get two max guys this offseason? Well, look, I, I think I think the Lakers did a great job. You know, phenomenal. Ma- listen, and, Magic, you yeah. gotta give it up to Magic. Yeah, but the thing was, I, did anybody have any doubt they were gonna be able to clear that cap space? I mean, I, I thought it was a, a, a foregone conclusion they were mm-hmm. gonna clear. If not. At the trade deadline, at the draft. But they got two expiring. So they basically got no, Jenny well, Fry's they cleared, coming off. They cleared Isaiah's the coming off. And yeah. they got a draft. This is such a win. They cleared the room. It'll be a win when they get the free agents. Okay. okay. Which leads us now to you know who. LeBron? Your guy. Your guy. Well, what, is, what does this mean? for? Let me say this about the Lakers first. Okay. Rob Palenka and Magic Johnson, they're playing the political game. Number one, explain, explain. number one, it was a good move because they did clear that cap room, okay. right? Number two, what they do this past summer? They gave Contavious Caldwell Pope what, 20, 18 to 20 18, million? 18 for a year. Okay. Yeah. Then they take Isaiah Thomas off your hands. He's a problem in Cleveland. You know he's, he's eating up the locker room. You, we'll take him. Yeah. Nice little 
nice little things you hey, did LeBron, we're for oh, Rich I did, Paul. That's good. I like yeah, that. Rich Paul represents Paul, Caldwell Pope, Holy represents God. LeBron. Is this breaking news? Can we No, I, I did not I'm put just, this together. That's on a I deeper haven't heard level. Anybody see, see I'm playing chess. You playing chess. I like that, I'm studying Chris. calculus. Like you studying oh. <laughs> algebra. I was starting. What's lower than algebra? Math? Wow. So, Geometry? Uh, Pre-cal? Uh, 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 addition? Your, your, your multiplication what? tables hey, or whatever you're doing? Text Maverick Carter and tell him thank you. That, that's a great <laughs> thank nugget. Thank you Listen. for that. Hey, no, but that, take this guy out of my locker room. Lakers? Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. sure. Yeah. LeBron, yes, sir. Right saying? here. Because they, they've duty. got absolutely no need for Isaiah. That None. Is a stroke of genius. Other than that $6.5 million is going to come off the cap. But that's, that's really not a lot of money in NBA standards. So that's the first thing. Now, I think we, what you want to ask is what does this mean for LeBron James? Is he more likely to stay in Cleveland after today or where do you see his future well, after today? I think a lot no, depends on the playoffs. But let me go back. So you, wow. You, 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 you usually like there's no reason yeah, to yeah, stay yeah. in Cleveland. Well, things have He's changed. out of there. Hey, things have changed. Okay. Um, I do want to say this. Do you think Dan Gilbert considered the – Shucks, Lakers can now afford two max guys. They've helped out KCP. They're helping us with Isaiah Thomas. Boy, the Lakers are playing this real savvy. Do you think Dan Gilbert put that together? I'm going to ask. I don't know because I don't believe that Dan Gilbert went to LeBron and said, what should we do? I think no. this is Dan Gilbert reclaiming the team. Hey, LeBron, uh, you wanted Iman Shumpert. You wanted Mozgov. You wanted JR. It worked. We got a title. You wanted us to pay Tristan. JR, we got a title. Thank you. David Griffin, now your guy who you worked in lockstep with, he's gone. LeBron, it's my team. You're not going to commit. We're going to make decisions we think are right for the future. And I think they've made some good moves. But I don't know if this unit is going to get LeBron to stay long term. I still believe the Lakers are the number one option, LeBron and Paul George in a tandem. I don't in think LA. it was a power move by Gilbert. Now, you know, it's his franchise. He is more involved in front office moves. So, yeah, to a certain extent, he did what he wanted to do. But I don't think it was a throwing something in LeBron's face. Like, hey, we're my team now. I think it was – I think he made these moves thinking, one, this is going to make us better right now, and this is going to impress LeBron. Because at the end of the day, no matter how much tension there is between Dan and LeBron – Gilbert wants him to stay. Obviously. If for no other reason think, than a business I, I do want to be on record. Move, I think LeBron. LeBron wants to, deep down, really? wants, hold on, hold on, wants to stay. But then when he gets with this group and if they flop in the postseason or they struggle, or they get swept, then it's like, well, I can't win here. But I think deep down, he wants, this is where he's from, man. I, I, look, if he wants to stay, he can stay. Wow. Because the, I think one, well, look, there are a few things to hit. Number one, uh, I think this tells LeBron like, I think he's actually a little more likely to stay. Now, I, I've said before, I think he's probably more likely to leave. And that still may be the case. But wherever it was, 35, 40% that he would stay, I think that number has inched up now. Huh. Because now LeBron can look at that front office of Kobe Altman and the rest of the guys and say, you know what? They can get things done. Okay. This was impressive. As I said earlier, now you have confidence – in the front office to make moves. I mean, what they did was, Kyrie. was spectacular. Well, it was Kyrie. That well, was, that was bad. Move. Kyrie was bad. Um, they didn't bring back Matthew Della Vadova. A few, you know, that was oh, a while Dele ago. Reference. But things like that, they've made some bad moves. This showed you they can make moves okay. and do different but things. But let, let me pour some water. Can I pour some water on this? On paper, these moves look great. Uh, uh, the first glance, wow, they reshaped the roster. They got younger, more athletic, more wings. We've got to see how it plays yeah. out. It's one thing to say he's more likely to stay on based on this, but, uh, you know. I'm not we saying don't know he's if George Hill. Saying, I'm I mean, just George saying, Hill's been in Sacramento. I don't even know what his game's like I, anymore. I'm just saying I mean, you're talking about a guy who had really no confidence in the front office. Now, now seeing, some. okay, yeah, that's all, that's all I'm saying. Because, look, wherever LeBron goes, even the late – they're not giving – he's not going to have the free reign within the organization that he, has, he in has in Cleveland. Well, So if you think these guys are – I don't think the Lakers are How desperate are the Lakers to get back to relevance? I don't think they are giving him that. They're, obviously, you consult with him, you talk with him, you give him respect, but I don't think Magic Johnson is just giving – or even Rob Polink. Like, 
I, I don't think he'd get it anywhere else but Cleveland. Well, I don't know, Chris. You were here a couple weeks ago. Hey, man, Dan Gilbert's got to do whatever he can to keep the second best player in NBA history in the building. Why don't the Lakers have to do everything they can to get the second best most player in NBA history? Most organizations don't run that way. And most of the times, that doesn't work. LeBron made it work a few years ago because he, it was LeBron is so great and Kyrie is so great. And you still had a Kevin Love as your third best player. You know, I, I, it's just rare. I mean, look at the best franchises in sports. San Antonio, Miami with Pat Riley. They don't, okay. players don't run it. Football, New England, players don't right, run it. Okay. That's all I'm it's saying. It's a players league. In the Even NBA. when Magic Let me ask is, you, uh, let's go back to Miami real quick. Who, who made the Chris Bosh deal happen? LeBron put together calls, or was that all Pat Riley back in the day? Because I want to give LeBron a lot of credit for the Kevin Love, for all the moves he made with Griffin in Cleveland. But uh, let's go back to Miami real quick. Was that mostly LeBron or mostly Pat Riley putting that well, championship Well, LeBron was trying to get Chris Bosh to go to Cleveland with him. Bosh didn't want to go to Cleveland. Right. Then LeBron and Dwayne and Bosh sat down, and they all kind of came so up So you with could it. say basically every swing LeBron's had at building a contender – He's hit a home run. Would no, I, I wouldn't say that because I think there are moves that – there are players LeBron wanted and it didn't work out. You know, I mean, Le, LeBron's not on the phone making calls. Well, you know what I mean. We're talking to other GMs about, hey, you going to give us – I mean, <laughs> of course you know, not. Let's, not, let's not go. So, look, that, that's one thing. So, I think LeBron will have a little more confidence in his front office. What he wants to do ultimately this summer is going to depend on a few things. Number one, is it better in his mind – does he think it's better to stay in the East and keep reaching the finals or go and losing or going to the West and maybe I don't meet, make the finals. Maybe I get to the second round, oh, conference finals and lose, but I'm not racking up three and six, three and seven, three and eight in the finals. What do you think I, I, is I, best? Listen, you know I like – Because if, if, if you I don't like, mind, if you're just like – if LeBron is saying, man, I just want to get to the finals and take my shot. Then you stay east. Mm. All right, we, we've talked a little bit about the Warriors and their struggles against the Rockets and the Thunder this year. And, and they're, it's tough to quantify, but the, the hunter versus the hunted and the staying aggressive to stay on top, I don't know that I've seen it from the Warriors of late. Maybe they'll flip the switch and it happens. But once you get to next year, that's going on like a fifth year, right, of dominance. How long? Do teams and franchises dominate before? Hey, it starts to crumble a little. But bit. is this there Cleveland? There is like a three to five year window. Now, uh, you look at the Lakers. You've got youth in Lonzo. He ain't never won anything. Brandon Ingram. They are starved to win. Kyle Kuzma. Well, that's a lot of I don't even know Kyle Kuzma. Been questions, to a sweet do you 16. have the ability? Okay, you get those three young guys. You bring in Paul George and LeBron, who have won something. And let me add this: Magic in that front office since he's taken over with Rob Palenka. Let's admit they've done a lot of good things between the KCP, Brooke Lopez. We'll take these guys one-year deals. Draft, nailed. Kyle Kuzma, nailed. Josh Hart, they are batting really well so far in that Lakers front office. Everything I've seen is positive. You're LeBron. Hey, yeah, Kobe Altman and Dan Gilbert are doing nice things, but look at those guys in L.A. They're restoring that Lakers well, brand. You said I'm impressed. The key would be, like I said, number one, what does he think? Is it better to stay in the East and reach the finals and lose or go West and not reach the finals, maybe? Or, and the second thing is, who would go there with him? If Paul George is willing to go to Lakers you got two top with 10 LeBron, players. then, yeah, it looks good. Although, that team's still not at the top of the Western Conference. Okay, they're top three. But they're, the, well, maybe. I don't, OKC, okay, well, yeah, if you lose, yeah, you lose if, if George leaves yeah. OKC, okay, Houston would still be tough. Golden State would still be tough. San Antonio, depending on what happens there, they're always going to be tough. But that's – you're right. If, if, if The key is for LeBron, I think, is Paul George. Does he decide to stay – While we're on Paul George, We don't even ask. know – I mean, I, I assume George would like to play with LeBron. Yeah, right, we don't that's know that's another thing. Let me ask you, Paul George, we've seen him improve lately. I mean, he looks ridiculous. He's playing really well. He didn't make the All-Star team initially, right? He was added. We don't, I don't know Paul George at all. I wonder. He was the alpha in Indiana. Went to the Eastern Conference Finals twice as the number one guy. He's now the number two guy. Would he be the number one or number two in L.A.? If LeBron 34 next year, Paul George still at, I believe, 28, 29 in his prime, would Paul George... No you don't even have to think about that, huh? 
LeBron James is still better than Paul George. Yes. By a wide right. margin. As right. good as George is. So so wait, does Paul George then, is he stuck being a number two? He's a number two. You don't think it, he's an alpha? Not on a championship team. Eastern Conference Finals twice as the alpha against LeBron. He did lose. On a championship team. Championship. Okay. He's a number two. That's no slight. But he's a number two. Period. The end. He was the number one the last two I, years I, in Indiana. Well, How far did they go? Well, he was hurt the one year, right? He missed an entire season. The they last came back. two years he's been they healthy. Came back and they, they were, were not a seventh very good. and an yeah, eighth seed. They were not seed. very good. They weren't, you need a roster, man. Is that happening with LeBron James? Would there ever no, be a seventh but, or eighth uh, seed? Come on, LeBron's so now that tells turning you LeBron's going to be the number one guy. He's not, George is number two right now. To Westbrook. Right, and we'll see what they do. But so, okay, so how can he be a top 12 guy in the NBA, top 15, and be a number two? How I mean, number, number one, one, I'm talking about number one on a championship team. Right. Blake Griffin is a number one, not on yeah, a championship yeah, team, but he's so, a number okay, one. How many number ones? Chris Paul is a number one, mm. but is he a number one on a championship I team? Would say no. 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 So how many James number Harden one James Harden is a number James one. James Harden. Let's see. Let's Kevin see. Durant. There are three guys who proved. That's it? Let, let me, Kawhi Leonard? Let me finish. There are three guys in the NBA who have proven. Proven. Proven that they are a number one guy on a championship team. LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Steph Curry. Kawhi That's Leonard. It. No Kawhi has Leonard. Has he proven it? He was NBA Finals MVP. He averaged 14 points a game that year. He wasn't. Finals he, MVP. So was Andre Iguodala. So it's Does a that, okay. It was a Got series. It. it was a good series by Kawhi. I'm talking about for an entire That's 82 it. game. I'm just stating facts. Now, do I think Kawhi could lead a team to a championship in San Antonio? Yes. Do I think James Harden is that caliber of player? Yes. Kyrie? Do I think. I, I, I don't know. He's a number one. But is he a number one on a chance? It's Gordon a difference. No, I'm joking. It's a difference, though. You see what I'm saying? Right, right, I'm right. just saying there are three guys who have proven it. Proven it. That's all I'm saying. Well, what is, I, wait, 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 I like wait, wait, these on, other on, guys, but you, they haven't proven it yet. Did you say James Harden in that group or no? I said Harden is that caliber player, but he hasn't proven it yet. That's what I'm – there's a difference, man. So is is Paul George on the hardest? There have only been a handful of guys – Ever. Ever okay. who have proven, proven okay. it. Kareem, Magic, Jordan, Barkley? Shaq. He didn't. He, he never didn't, won so, a ring. Okay, he didn't so prove then it. Then it becomes like a ring. Stick. Now, well, you prove as the number one guy you can lead a team to a championship. Now you're right. That leaves out Hall of Famers, Patrick yeah. Ewing. But what do you? Are, do you want to win a championship? Oh, David Robinson. He didn't prove it as the number one guy. So Paul, I, tough Paul George oh, is man. a great player. I mean, I think he's tremendous. He's a perennial all-star. He is a number one on teams. But is he a number one on a team that's going to win a championship? Oh, that's a good Is one. Russell Westbrook. He hasn't proven it yet. Yeah. So I that doesn't mean that's not really a slight that you're not good enough. I'm just saying there are only three guys that have proven I it. I wonder if LeBron. And you know what that's doing? That's judging everybody else, all these other superstars and stars, by the LeBron James standard. And that's, a, and that's kind LeBron of unfair. Because LeBron gets that's judged a at a higher standard. Right. If LeBron doesn't win, then it was a bad season but, for him. Okay, but if LeBron's looking at that roster, Kevin Love, we can agree, he's not a number one caliber guy in the oh. James Harden, Paul George. And then you look at Paul George. How would LeBron not want to play with Paul George over Kevin Love? I mean, it makes well, no sense Well, you're in a tougher me. conference. So that's where I, that's where the other factor comes in. It's gonna be a fun. Let, let me five ask you this. Let me up. throw in a bonus for you. Okay. Bonus question. Kyrie Irving, how big of a winner was he in this his decision to leave oh, Cleveland? Oh come on! I mean, it's off the charts. <laughs> One of the best moves in in recent NBA history. We mocked him. Who leaves LeBron? Who walks away from the King? He did it. He's the number one seed. The guys he got traded for are shipped out of town. Kyrie Irving sitting on top of the world. He's an MVP candidate. And Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, always in the mix with Danny Ainge for Anthony Davis or whatever big fish is out there. Gordon Hayward's hurt. He's coming back. I mean, the Celtics are set up in the near future. I mean, Kyrie Irving. Massive. Kyrie Irving was a big winner. This has been great for him. He's always going to be on a relevant team, a contending team. Yep. 
Like you said, he's on the periphery of the MVP conversation. He's, you know, he's top six. Yeah, he's in there. He's still a perennial all-star as always. Okay, so he's won. Like, it's been great for him. However, is he closer to a championship right now than he would have been had he stayed in Cleveland? Is he closer to getting to the finals now or if he had stayed in Cleveland and not left? Okay, so a week ago. If the, if the standard, see, it's expectations. Kyrie can have a great year, number one seed, all-star, second, third team All-NBA, fifth in MVP voting, and get beat in the Eastern Conference Finals. Everybody like, great, you won, that's great. But what's the standard? Okay. If we're saying if the, if, the, if the goal is to get to the finals and have a chance to win it, I think he would have been closer to that if he had stayed in Cleveland and would have been an all-star, right? Would have been an all-star. an all-star, right? Exactly. The only thing individually he gained basketball-wise, I know he gained peace of mind. He likes the way they play better. He's got a better coach. I get that. But as far as basketball, he would have been an all-star in Cleveland, would have went, had a better shot at going deeper in the playoffs if he had stayed in Cleveland. And the only thing he got – is he's in the MVP conversation, but he's not going to win. He's a number one. He's not going to win the MVP. But he doesn't have to jostle with LeBron, right? He doesn't have to jostle with Ty Lue, because remember, they weren't getting along. According to some of the reports that came out, uh, Jackie McMullen. Well, for, for his, yeah, for his peace of mind, he's happier. Yeah, and that's valuable. And that is but I'm, I'm talking valuable. about basketball-wise and winning championships. Is he better? You don't even know that he'll get to the finals. If he was in Cleveland, would it's, you have it's any funny doubt? That you're saying this because a week ago, a week ago, as the Cavs are imploding, uh, Boston's number one scene, we would have said, "Yep, Kyrie, no question." And now Wait, it Kyrie changes. What, Kyrie's in better shape in Boston than Cleveland a week ago. Now Cleveland all of a sudden gets a little better. George Hill, Rodney Hood, Jordan Clarkson. I'm still going to lean Kyrie. I know you're not going to like it. I I actually believe, and we can disagree with this all day that the Celtics would have a better chance in the finals against the Warriors. I don't think they're going to win the series, obviously, but I think they match up better, better defensive team than the Cavs would. I mean, the Cavs got better, but, Chris, this, I need to see this group play some defense. We know the Celtics can play defense. I believe the Celtics in the finals would match up better with the Warriors. Are they going to get there? I don't know. I, I, as I said, I believe the Cavs are the favorite to get there, but I don't think this – I think Kyrie's that decision. I think that older team that that former Cavs team that was existed yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> even though I think they would have, I would have picked them to reach the finals. Still, I agree with you that I think Boston would match up better with Golden State right. and give them a better series right. than Cleveland. Competitive. Now this new group, let's see, let's see what they look like. Right. Let's see if they because the key is we can see agree. how the chemistry. We is. know LeBron teams are going to score. Can this team play defense? Yeah, and I think is they, 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 they should be able to. Because they, 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 they have the athleticism and the strength. Once you have that, then it comes down to heart, desire, Chemistry will, matters. and technique. And if they, they can get that, then they should be good. Look, overall, Kyrie Irving has won because he's happier. He, he's, light, he's enjoying playing basketball now more than he was in Cleveland. So I get that. That's great. I'm just saying if we change the standard, if we judge Kyrie by the LeBron James standard, and say championship you, you or bust. You can't do that. I'm just saying, That's if, it, if it's That's championship or bust, he was closer to a championship. LeBron is in the Jordan in Magic standard. I well, agree. Kyrie's no, got I a agree. ways to I agree. Him. I agree with that. But yeah, you lucky we didn't have our man Josh Goldman. Listen, there was a or lot of Jeremy agreement ben here. Bowl, We're just trying or to John help. Hill, Neil Foley, any of these guys sitting in that chair and judging. Well, because I was. We did agree. Today. We did yeah. agree yeah. on the line. A lot of stuff happened today. You're learning. I am. I'm next, proud next of you, week, man. All-Star you even got week. a new haircut. Uh, little, Makes you look younger, oh, like, ooh, like like I'm 19? No, like a kid, I something like that. 13, car. not 19, 39. Oh, what it. <laughs> Thank you for joining this special edition of In The Zone's Knockdown, Jay. For Jason McIntyre, I'm Chris Broussard. We signing out. Peace.